In this video, we're going to look at integration and in particular standard results for inverse trig functions. If we have the integral of 1 over a squared plus x squared and we integrate with respect to x, the standard result is 1 over a and then we have arc tan of x over a plus a constant of integration. Sometimes you'll see it written as arc tan or you might see it as the inverse tan. So tan to the minus 1 of x over a plus c, where a and c are constants. Let's look at deriving this particular result. We can do this by using a substitution. So we let x be equal to a tan theta. If we differentiate both sides with respect to theta, we have dx d theta will be equal to a sec squared theta. So at this stage, we could write that dx is equal to a sec squared theta d theta. What I'm now going to do is substitute that into the original integral. So here we have now the integral of 1 over a squared plus x squared. Now, an expression for x squared would be a squared tan squared theta. So we can write a squared tan squared theta. And then in the numerator, we're going to have now a sec squared theta d theta. Using a trig identity, we know that sec squared theta will be equal to 1 plus tan squared theta. If I factor the denominator of this particular fraction, we can write this now in the numerator as a sec squared theta d theta over now a squared, and then we'll have 1 plus tan squared theta. We can see now that we can write 1 plus tan squared theta as sec squared theta, so we end up now cancelling off. The a and the a squared will cancel, so we'll have 1 over a d theta. So we're now integrating 1 over a, where a is a constant with respect to theta, and of course this is going to give me 1 over a theta plus a constant of integration. If we go back to the line here, we've got x is equal to a tan theta. If we rearrange this, we could say now that the inverse tan of x over a is equal to theta. So simply substituting that in down here, we've got 1 over a, and we can write this as either arc tan of x over a, or tan to the minus 1, the inverse tan of x over a, plus a constant of integration. So this shows us a standard result, and that standard result is given in the formula book. So the integral of 1 over a squared plus x squared with respect to x is 1 over a arctan of x over a plus a constant, or 1 over a the inverse tan of x over a plus a constant. So let's go ahead and look at some of these in action. Let's start off with a nice straightforward integral. We might have, for example, 1 over 25 plus x squared. So we're integrating with respect to x. If I match this up now with the previous formula that we had, we can see that a squared is equal to 25. So if you want to make a note, a squared is equal to 25. So we're going to end up now with a being equal to 5. So all we need to do is simply write this in. So it'll be 1 over a, which is 5, then we're going to have the inverse tan or arc tan of x over 5 plus a constant of integration. So using the notation tan to the minus 1, we end up with 1 fifth tan to the minus 1 of x over 5. Alternatively, you could write 1 fifth arc tan of x over 5 plus a constant of integration. So all we've done is use a standard result that's in the formula book to go ahead and find the integral. OK, let's look at another one. Let's say we wanted to integrate, and let's put some limits on. We'll take 0 and 2. Then we're going to have 3 over 4 plus x squared, and we're integrating with respect to x. 
So we have the integral here, and at this stage, we could write this now as three lots of the integral of 1 over 4 plus x squared. It's entirely up to you on how you want to write this. I'm going to do this one step by step, and I'm actually just going to write it as three lots of the integral from 0 to 2 of 1 over 4 plus x squared. Often these integrals look like the log functions. So in the past we've seen if we have now f dashed of x over f of x, the integral of this is going to give us, so if we write this, the integral with respect to x will give us the natural log of the modulus of the f of x plus some constant of integration. Often students mistakenly write this. Now, if this was the case, we would have some multiple of x in the numerator. So with this particular one, it's not of this form, where we've got the derivative or some multiple of the derivative in the numerator and the original function in the denominator. If we look, this falls into now the category we first looked at. So this is 1 over a squared plus x squared. So we can see from here that a squared is 4. So if a squared is going to be equal to 4, we can say that a will be equal to 2. So using the standard result, we're going to be looking now at three lots of 1 over 2. And I'm going to use arctan, so arctan of x over 2. And we're interested in this from 0 to 2. So all I'm going to do is go ahead and evaluate this. So what we've got now is 3 over 2, and it's entirely up to you on how you want to deal with the constant here. We've got 3 over 2, then we'll have now arctan, so just jotting this in, arctan of 2 over 2, which is going to give me 1, and then we'll have now minus arctan, and then we'll have now 0 over 2, which is going to give us 0. We're working in radians in these particular questions, as with all calculus and trig. We know that the inverse tan of 1 is going to give us pi by 4. The inverse tan of 0 is going to give us 0. So we could go ahead and write this as 3 over 2. We're going to have now pi by 4 minus 0. So we can tidy up our answer and we can write this now as 3 pi by 8. And that now is the exact value. So all I've done is use a standard result. I've taken out now the 3 as a multiple, which of course you don't need to do, and then just gone ahead and used the standard result we've integrated and evaluated given the limits 0 and 2. Let's look at another one. We might have, for example, now the integral of 4 over x squared plus 1 ninth, and we're integrating with respect to x. So we can see that this looks of a similar form. What I'm going to do is step by step this and rewrite it. We certainly don't have to take the constant out. Often I prefer to take the constant to the left of the integral sign and rewrite this. We can see that we've not got the derivative of the denominator in the numerator, therefore it won't integrate to give a log function. What we've got is 1 over 9 plus x squared. And now we're matching this up with the standard results we have. So we can see that a squared is equal to 1 over 9. Therefore, we can say that a will be equal to 1 over 3. So what we can say then is that this is going to be 4 lots. And then we're going to have 1 over a. If we have 1 over 1 over 3, we will have 3 lots. And using the notation tan to a minus 1, the inverse tan of x over a. x over one third will give us 3x and then we will have some constant of integration. So we can just go ahead now and write this as 12 the inverse tan of now 3x plus a constant of integration. So all I've done is used a standard result after rearranging this. Again, you don't have to take the 4 out, you don't have to rewrite it in this way, but it might help you spot that integral slightly easier. Let's look at another one. Let's take now the integral, and we will have 7, let's have 7, and then we'll have now 9 plus 4x squared. We're integrating with respect to x. 
If we consider this particular example, what we've got here now is a coefficient on the term in x squared. To deal with an integral like this, we're going to factor out the 4 in the numerator, sorry, in the denominator. So we're going to take out the 4 in the denominator. Now, one way that we could do this, and again, I'll do this step by step, is first write in that we've got 7 lots of the integral of 1 over 9 plus 4x squared, and we're integrating with respect to x. If we take the 4 out, we've got 7 lots of 1 over 4, and then we'll have 9 over 4, and then we'll have plus x squared. This is starting to look like the standard result that we want. Again, you certainly don't have to do this, but we're going to end up now with 7 over 4, the integral of 1 over 9 over 4 plus x squared. The reason why I've done this is to simply put it back in that standard form that we can equate to our formula book. So from here, we can see that a squared is equal to 9 over 4. So a is going to be equal to 3 over 2. So what we end up here with is now 7 over 4. Then we will have 1 over a. So 1 over 3 over 2 will give us 2 over 3. We will have the inverse tan or arc tan of x over a. And this will give us now 2x over 3 or two-thirds x, plus a constant of integration. We can see here that we can cancel off, and we've got now the 2 and the 4 cancelling, so this will now give me 7 over 6, the inverse tan of x, or 2x over 3, plus a constant of integration. So with your constants here, in terms of the 7 and the 4, it's entirely up to you on how you want to deal with them. I just think this step-by-step -step method, putting it back into the form that we can equate to the formula book, makes things slightly easier. Let's now look at another example. This time we're going to look at the integral of 2x plus 1 over now, and we'll have 4 plus x squared, and we're integrating with respect to x. Again, this kind of looks like the derivative in the numerator of the denominator. We know if we have now the integral of f dashed of x over f of x, this gives us now the log of the modulus of the function of x. Now, let's just look at this. If we had now a 1 in the numerator, that would suggest that we have a term in x in the denominator, which is clearly not the case. So this is not applicable at the start of the integral. Instead, what I'm going to do is split this up. So I'm going to split the numerator and write this as 2x over 4 plus x squared. We're going to integrate that particular fraction. Then we're going to add to it now the integral of 1 over 4 plus x squared. And again, we're integrating with respect to x. This one does fall into the form f dashed of x over f of x, which will give us now the log of the modulus of the f of x plus a constant. This one here falls into our standard results. So if we look at this one, we can see that this is going to integrate to give us now the natural log of the modulus of 4 plus x squared. And this one will give us now 1 over a, which will be 1 over 2, the inverse tan or arc tan of x over 2 plus some constant of integration. So this now gives us the standard result on the second fraction and we've used our understanding of log integrals on the first fraction to simply write this as the log of the modulus of 4 plus x squared. So this would now be our end result from splitting the fraction up. Hopefully me going through that fairly quickly should be fairly straightforward given the fact that we've looked at a range of these in the previous examples. So there's a brief introduction to using standard results to find the integral of particular inverse trig functions. So to cap, what we've got then is the integral of 1 over a squared plus x squared with respect to x is 1 over a 
arctan of x over a plus a constant, or if you want to write it as the inverse tan, we've got 1 over a, the inverse tan of x over a plus a constant. This will give, be given to you. It's simply now using basic trig and then basic integration techniques to go ahead and find the integral.